Hi everybody, Dacre over here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Boy, have I got a lot of stuff to share with you. So, ooh, okay, so as promised on my Instagram account, Super Dacob all spelled together, follow me there for all the previews and sneak peeks that are gonna come here. First they kind of pop up and hint and tease there, and then they come here. Um, Chanel, 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 Chanel. One of the many flights I've been doing through Europe lately for, for work, um, duty free. Uh, look at that. Chanel items. And um, I posted this bottle here, Les Exclusives. Now, you know my take on, and I'm going to post the link in the description box down below, my take on the Les Exclusives Eau de Parfum Reformulations by Olivier Polge. Um, I don't like them. Not at all. And I thought I would never purchase one. Now, this one was literally adds up on the duty free shop to be, and I was shocked to find those exclusives in the duty free shop to begin with, uh, almost 30% cheaper than it was in stores, than it would be in regular retail, which makes this cheaper than what regular retail eau de toilettes used to cost. And there's one specific reason why only one eau de parfum of the Les Exclusives, well, maybe two, but definitely only one for now that uh, I needed purchasing as a trial in comparison with the Eau de Toilette. And I posted on Instagram asking you any guesses. And the reason behind why this Eau de Parfum. And I have to say, of all of the guesses that you sent in, only one person guessed. Only one. I was a bit shocked that nobody really guessed. But nobody guessed the reason. But one person guessed which perfume it is. So we're going to get to that in a second, though. Because I have another announcement to make. Um, traveling, traveling, traveling. Still traveling. But I went to the most incredible place in the world. One of the best cities in the world. Berlin. And I was invited to uh, film prior to the opening, as well as at the opening of the retrospective of Gianni Versace. And I have prepared an incredible video for you. Uh, it was it was so exciting for me to be there that I actually separated it in segments because there's so much footage. It was so amazing backstage. I don't want to give too much away, but it, it's incredible. So please look forward to that um, coming out after this video. So, well, not right today, but in a day or two. Editing is being finalized. Um, so excited. So look forward to that. It's it's a blast from the past. You have the feeling that you're back in the 90s. That That's exactly how I felt. So I'm so excited to share that with you. But back to this. Um, well, the perfume that I purchased was... Let me lift it. Gardenia. One person guessed. Um, and why Gardenia Eau de Parfum? Now, um, before I say that, let me digress one more time into some other realm. I was talking to, I have my intelligence within uh, Chanel, uh, you know, insiders. And my complaints about the Eau de Parfums are actually really, um, there's a reason for it. that They're not as good as the Eau de Toilettes. And also, this person that works for Chanel told me that the Eau de Parfums are actually not Eau de Parfum. They're like an Eau de Toilette concentré. They're not using the full potential of the essential oils that they should be using for an Eau de Parfum concentration. Isn't that interesting? Why, oh why, Chanel? Oh, you want to save money. Oh, I see. But wait, didn't you up the prices really a lot on the Eau de Parfums now of the Les Exclusives? Why did you do that, Chanel? Oh, right, because you want to earn more money. Because now the Eau de Parfums, because like you want to copy the craze that, you know, Dior Privé is doing with only releasing Eau de Parfums and Louis Vuitton only, only releasing Eau de Parfums. So you want to run behind them because heaven forbid you were to be any less popular, famous or expensive as they are. But then you deliver a product that is not as good as a real Eau de Parfum should be. Shame. The shame. Nevertheless, I got this one because I really love Gardenia. Now, I have also the um, 
<laughs> this little bag, I kind of prepared everything. I have an eau de toilette, um, eau de toilette version of, of Gardenia, the Jacques Paul's reformulation. And as much as I love Gardenia, and you could check the review, I'll post the link in the description box down below, my review of Gardenia eau de toilette. Um, it's not as intense as I would want it to be. And the eau de toilette always kind of smelled better on clothes than it did on my skin. It, it always turns a little bit pissy and acidy on me. And it vanishes very quickly. But since I love the original four exclusives from Ernest Beau, from the Ernest Beau period, which is Queer de Russie, Gardenia, Bois des Îles, um, and number 22, I thought to myself, let's give this one a try. I know some of you have written me uh, that uh, it smells like some Elizabeth Taylor um, release of a fragrance. Uh, what, what was it? Not White Diamond, something else like a soapy, cheap gardenia. Let's see. We're going to unbox it and I'll let you know. Um, I love doing unboxings on camera. But guys, the Versace thing, you have to check that one out. That That's like, you wanted a follow me around video. You wanted, you've been telling me for quite a while, okay, get out of the bunker a little bit, walk around, you know, meet some people. That's what happened. Walking around. Oh my God. It was like a ghost mansion. I had the feeling Johnny was there, present. Incredible. All right. So let's lift it up. Historic moment. We are opening... Oh, very light color. We are opening an Eau de Parfum Gardenia. There it is, 200 milliliter. Let me put this there. Let's get as close as possible to the um, camera. What batch is this one? Okay, wait, first. There you can also see the color of the liquid very 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 light i have to say let's compare it right away to the other toilet and mind you this is a 75 ml so the bottle of the other toilet is um of the other toilet is thinner i mean there's less liquid in there so it's not as thick so you could imagine that it would be lighter right well <laughs> it looks darker to me the other toilet <laughs> It looks darker than the Eau de Parfum in the liquid. But I do have the Eau de Toilette since many years now. Uh, the Eau de Toilette is a batch 3301, but like literally, I don't know, 2011-ish. And the new one is batch code 0601. All right, now, I have also, oh, this is like a huge haul actually, I have also on a secondhand website, Hunted Down, um, I prepared it to show you guys as well. I'm so much into, you know, I love my Chanel's. So let's just like, uh, I posted this on Instagram as well, but I've hunted down um, a Chanel number no. five, pure perfume, 35 milliliter. This is a, something fell down. I don't know what. Uh, this is a pure uh, perfume. It's a tester. That's why it has this plastic top on top. It's from a perfumery. Um, 35 ml pure perfume. I got it for a really great price. So I'm bathing in Chanel number no. five today. I really feel, I feel amazing because uh, to have the opportunity to use the pure perfume is rare because it's usually super expensive and it's hard to hunt down bigger quantities. Um, so I use that as a base. Now I have it here and here. And I just want to have that as kind of an underscore to the testing of Gardenia, which I will place here and here. So I'm going to do maybe Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum. So I'm going to compare the two. Uh, and then I'm always going to have that kind of frame of number five around them, just because I really love to see also how the combination works of the two. I'm not going to layer them on top of each other, but I just want to get whiffs of number five while I'm testing Gardenia. That makes a lot of sense to me, but I know to others it might not make any sense. But anyway, let's get to it. All right, spraying the Eau de Parfum for the first time. Okay, we're going to do Eau de Parfum here, okay guys? Oh, 
I sprayed all the way to the side. Oh, okay. Let's do three of them. I just want to... Okay. It smells super light, actually. And now let's do the um, auto toilet on this side. So I did three on each side. So I'll, let's be fair, right? <laughs> Jacques Paul just on the toilet seems more intense right off the bat, like in the opening notes. So I don't know what to tell you guys. The color is so different. The Eau de Parfum has such a lighter color than the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette is like more yellow. I'm seeing it towards a white background now, towards my own light. But let me just like lift this once again towards you. Um, yes, it's so obvious. Look at the Eau de Toilette. Look how darker it is as opposed to the Eau de Parfum. Now I know, and mind you, I have not exposed this, the Eau de Toilette to light. I have not. This one I really keep close. This is not like uh, like... Number five, I love to put number five in the light to get that animalic note kind of come out more. But with Gardenia, that's not the case. So, yes, it was exposed to oxygen because as you use it, you know, oxygen kind of enters a little bit more of the bottle. But um, geez, Louise, I love Gardenia, don't get me wrong. But, um, and actually, the only reason why. <laughs> Why I really got this one was because it was super reduced and it's the only Les Exclusives that I wanted to get in Eau de Parfum, if anything. Of course I asked the ladies in Duty Free, like, do you have the pure perfumes? Because if they had like almost 30% off on the pure perfumes of the Les Exclusives, I would have gotten Gardenia as a pure parfum, which, which I still don't have in my collection. But I got the, um, the Eau de Parfum because it was the only other thing, you know, I, I couldn't pass on <laughs> such a huge sale. Opening notes, I prefer the other toilet. I mean, I have no reason to lie to you. I like, you know, what a splurge of money, even if it's 30% off, it's still, it's the big bottle. It's still a lot of money. And I still prefer uh, the other toilet. I'm a bit shocked right now. Let's let it settle in for for a while i'm gonna put this next to me just so that they don't wobble around here um i'm going to show you something else that i got while in paris and i made a video on this one you could check it out in the description box down below uh number five the eau de toilette uh purse spray from number five now this was so sweet a dear friend of mine i promise i won't say the name and i will not so hilarious i had such a laugh so look at this guys so here it says purse spray Oh my god, this is turning out to be such a Chanel video. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Here at the bottom it says purse spray. Or a vaporisateur de sac, right? So funny because she saw the video and then the next day we were talking. She's like, Dacov, why did you? You were so funny. I laughed out throughout the entire video. I was asking myself, why would you put on and spray yourself full with a perfume? <laughs> That was made to spray the bags with. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, it says it's a it's a purse spray. So it's meant to spray to perfume your purse. And I was like, oh sweetie, no, 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 no. That's not what it means. Don't perfume if you have a especially if you have a leather bag, don't spray perfume in it. You don't want all that alcohol all over that leather. You're gonna damage the leather. A uh, purse spray means that it's a size in, a, in its tiny container. It's the size that fits comfortably into a purse. We laughed. Both of us laughed so much. This was hilarious. Such a way to lose yourself in translation. Incredible. But I, then I wondered how many other people actually really think or thought that because it says purse spray... Do people really buy it and go spray their purses with it? I don't know, but it's an option. It's a possibility because somebody laughed at me for using it on myself when it should have been a purse spray. But it's not, guys. It, it, it's an eau de toilette, regular eau de toilette in a purse size format. That's that. Let's see how this one is developing. <laughs> Oh, 
I, I can't, they're different. They are different. Um, sorry, I, I still prefer the whiffs of number five. <laughs> Oh, Olivier, what are you doing to us? Didn't one of you tell me that he now, in some interviews, said that he's going to be working more on head notes rather than uh, dry downs of their new releases from Chanel that he's going to create perfume wise? I'm like, really? That's awful. You're killing the heritage. It's because we live in an era where everybody has the attention span of fruit flies. So you gotta like it, you sniff it, oh, I hurt myself. You sniff it and you gotta like it immediately and then you buy it. You don't care about anything else. I was talking to another lady at a Dior perfume counter the other day and she said, Jacob, you know, let me tell you something. People have lost the vocabulary for describing scents. People know how to say, I like it, I don't like it. Or they say, too sweet. Or they might say dry or bitter, and that's it. They have no other word, no other imagination, no other poetry inside of them to describe anything else. But fragrances are so much more than that. We literally need somebody to educate us on how to approach fragrances, how to understand, how to talk about, how to describe a smell. What sort of imagination does it invoke or evoke inside of us? And so all of these brands are kind of catching up with the times that basically the masses are stupid and they just buy whatever you throw at them if it smells good in the first second they use them. So they don't bother investing the time and money to create good ingredients and use higher quality ingredients that actually are the ones that pop up in the dry down of fragrances because only in the dry down can you really tell if a fragrance is good or bad. Chanel's Gabrielle, by the time it dries down, it's out the dough. You're like, where, where did it go? Where did it go? The opening notes might be interesting to some, pleasant to most. What an atrocious way to describe a new release of a Chanel, not a flanker, but a new Chanel release after decades, well, one decade at least, um, from the last time that they released a new perfume, not a new flanker. And then Chanel is all about innovation. Coco Chanel was all about innovation. The brand Chanel ain't anymore, really. But Coco Chanel was all about innovation. And then, and then what? They slaughter her whole principle, everything she stood for, by releasing a perfume called Gabrielle that is pleasant, not offensive, easy to wear in the office. Let's make as much money as possible. Let's not make people think with it. Let's not underline individuality with it. Let's underline what is obvious. Let's underline the boring. Let's underline whatever is routine, whatever is safe, because we got to play it safe if we want to earn the dinero. All right, because it's all about the money. It's not about the art anymore. It's not about the poetry. And Olivier, another thing for you, mister. I respect you as a perfumer. I really do. I think uh, Dior Homme is amazing. The perfumes that you've done for other houses are very interesting. But you just don't get the poetry of Chanel. I know you got the job because of your dad, because your dad used to work for Chanel, so it's all vitamin B. That's how things work, especially in Europe. Um, but still, you don't get the poetry of Chanel. I'm sorry. I know there's also brand marketing behind that tells you also push it in that direction or go more in this direction. But we're all like all of us perfume lovers and Chanel lovers. Since quite some time, very disappointed. Very disappointed. You just don't get that poetry. Jacques understood it. It was magic what he created. And, and, and you're turning magic into something very mundane, you know, something very poof, flat. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. Back to Gardenia. I don't dislike it. It's okay, but as my friend who works for Chanel said, uh, these are not eau de parfums. These are eau de toilette concentrés, if anything. And the raw ingredients, the materials they use are not as elegant and not as special as they were for the eau de toilettes back in the day when they came out. Not the first four, but also the rest of the range that Jacques Paul brought, brought out for Chanel. 
um, in the late 2000s. The other toilet gardenia is much better. Listen, there's another thing. So the wonderful lady at the Duty Free uh, gave me this Chanel makeup pouch as a gift. And I haven't opened it yet. I'm going to open it with you guys. I, for those of you who follow me, I have received one of these m many, many months ago. Maybe I mean, over a year ago for sure, because I stopped purchasing stuff in 2017. So it was somewhere in 2016. And it was like a black pouch with a sycamore bottle etched in it. It was like a plastic pouch. These things are made in China. These are freebies. Of course, freebies are all made in China. <laughs> Chanel doesn't make those in Europe. Um, why? Well, to save money, of course. But um, so I'm thinking, is it the same one? Because quite some time has passed. I don't know if Chanel keeps producing. It's definitely the same box. Um, but we're going to unbox it together. You see what I mean? This is this is turning out to be a crazy Chanel video. It smells like plastic. Oh, ASMR. Should we do a little bit of ASMR? Wow, this is very different from the other pouch I have. Let's put this down. And it's a mattified um, plastic cover with a lot of makeup. There are no perfume bottles on this one. It's totally flat with no print on the back and print of Chanel Cosmetic in the front. And then there's a little tag that says Chanel Cosmetic, which is not printed. It's stitched, which is interesting. The Chanel is stitched on the black tag. I'll show it to you in a close-up in just a second. There's more tissue paper on the inside. It smells like super plastic. I kind of like this, it almost, um, how would you call it, Tyvek. Uh, Tyvek is like a plasticky material. You could use it sometimes to create uh, a dummy version of a dress before you create the dress because it's much cheaper to work with. But let's come in close. So this is the front part. You could see in the reflections how the bottles of the cosmetic kind of are printed on top of this material the back is totally flat but you could see the texture in it it's almost like it's it's been like squished together and then opened up again so it doesn't have wrinkles but it has a texture to it and that texture uh was wanted you know they did that on purpose and then here you have the little tag with the logo which is stitched rather than being printed and then we have a little Chanel logo on the zipper. So it's it's super cute. It's a great pouch. Thank you, Chanel, for this. This is amazing. I will use it for my traveling. Actually matches my red and black attire. It has a black zipper. Look at that. I didn't even know. No, we're all matchy-matchy. So there's that. Let's see how it developed. So we're, I'm showing stuff and then we're waiting for the development. Because, guys, when you purchase a fragrance... And this is something, mind you, the sales associates... <clears throat> The salespeople at these perfume counters of all of the bigger brands in particular, they pay attention and they have to report to the higher offices. They have to report how clients react. So you got to show them that you're not gullible and you don't fall for a fragrance in the first second you smell it. You see, got to take your time. Spray it. Don't give them an opinion immediately. You spray it if you want to test the fragrance and then they're like, what do you think? And then you go, I don't think anything because I got to wait at least 40 minutes before I can give you my opinion. So I'm going to walk around the place and if I like it after one hour, I'll be back and then we can talk. But right now, these are just the head notes and I don't judge a book by its cover. So I'm going to wait till I smell the dry down, till I feel how the fragrance mixes with my own chemistry, with my own body oils, with my own hormones. And then I'll know if I, if I really like a fragrance or not. And when the sales associates start hearing this from more and more customers, then they're going to get more and more, they're going to report it more and more back to the people that then report it to the other people who report it to the other marketing people who report it to the people that at the end are told to create a perfume that actually has better quality in the dry down. So it starts with us. It's our money. We give them the money. So we dictate what goes and what doesn't go. If we buy their crappy strategies, you know, for just making a cheap product and selling it as fast as possible, top notes are good. And you got to keep spraying it over and over and over again every hour because it just evaporates and disappears after. Well, then, then the joke's on us because then we, we literally throw our money away. Anyway. 
the eau de toilette is magical. The eau de parfum is not. <laughs> It bites me a little bit. It like it has a little. It smells like some plant. <laughs> it's weird. And eau de toilette it smells sophisticated. Eau de toilette smells rich. It's very light. I know, but it smells rich and dense in a way, almost creamy. And the eau de parfum smells cheap, dare I say. I mean, where is it? Well, I got a 200 ml bottle. I'm going to use it. <laughs> what, you know, no matter what, but. I'm going to have to find a way to mix it with something. Maybe, maybe I'm going to like spray a lot of the eau de parfum and then just like two sprays of eau de toilette on top just to kind of give it more of the quality that it used to have. Oh my God. It really two different worlds. And then again, look at the color difference. The eau de toilette is more concentrated than the eau de parfum. Who are you kidding, Chanel? Seriously. I'm getting so angry. <clears throat> Moving on. You could check out <laughs> the description box down below in my Amazon affiliates link, a link to um, this wonderful, um, um, it's, it's um, what you might call it. It's an unabridged 16 and a half hours on 14 CDs, red book, read by Tavia Gilbert. Wonderful cover. You could actually see Coco Chanel on here. Coco Chanel and the Pulse of History, uh, written by Rhonda K. Garalik, uh, Mademoiselle Coco Chanel. Um, great colors, great cover. Check this one out. So I'm going to, it also came out as a book, but, uh, and I, I've, I've you know, I showed this, I think, over a year ago, but I'm re-listening to it and I'm really enjoying it. It's so soothing um, to hear to hear the voice uh, read and because um, it's a funny voice. And also, by the way, Coco Chanel in this photo is wearing the 255 bag in its original form. It is the one in Jersey. So, yes, I would like to have a third 255 bag in my life. And yes, the third one will be Jersey for sure. For sure. If I ever get another 255 bag, it will be in Jersey. So um, I have this kind of affiliates link Amazon shop with select books that I love to read on fashion. Also some perfumes, maybe TV shows I like. And I'm going to post this one as well. So if you're interested in um, in getting this one, it's it's a great read or it's a great listen if you prefer uh, the audio book, which in my case... I, I, I'm kind of enjoying audiobooks lately very much, especially if I'm traveling because then it's something like I could, while I'm running, catching a flight or a train or whatever have you, I can't be reading and running, but I can't be listening and running. So that's why sometimes this is kind of really practical for me. Or if I fall asleep, I like to fall asleep to, to the sound of certain audiobooks. Um, while I'm reading, I would just kind of faint. <laughs> but I like that, I like to hear noise running even when I'm sleeping. So this is a good one. It's a fun one if you, if you, if you want. And of course, one, one more thing. I also show this on Instagram. This is not Chanel related, but I got this one at the duty free uh, as well. Aura by Thierry Mugler. And Aura has been uh, criticized and loved. Um, it is a very, very strange fragrance because I will do a review of it. I haven't unboxed it yet. I want to unbox it in a special video for you guys. But as I'm waiting for these two perfumes to dry down, let's talk about this one as well. Um, I want Aura. I want to make a review that is a review of this one. Whether I will love it or not, that's not the question right now. I have tested it. Not this one. This one is sealed. But I have tested a tester. Uh, 
two times, once prior to traveling and once at the duty free. Um, so I already have some opinions, but I want to play more with Aura until kind of, and yes, I want to do an unboxing on camera, so it's going to be hard. I'm going to have to go to perfume shop and spray it again because I love unboxing them on camera, you know, so I'm not going to kind of test this one yet. And I've noticed that for me, when it comes to Chanel, I like the huge bottles, even if it's to try something out. But everything else I purchase, I purchase the smallest bottle I can get. I know the um, proportions between the ratio of milliliters to price per milliliter is much higher. But quite frankly, I have so many fragrances that I like the little ones because they last me longer. I don't use them a lot because I have this tendency of Chanel is my home, literally. The, the fragrance world of Chanel is my home. And I make excursions and I love to travel to other realms and test out other worlds and other perfumes, but I always, sooner or later, I always come back home, always. So I've noticed that purchasing really big bottles of other fragrances doesn't work out for me very well because in long term I spend more money. But purchasing little ones, yes, the ratio milliliter or fluid ounce per dollar or whatever you're paying in is higher, but you spend less long term because you you, you you paid less. 30 ml costs less than 90 ml. 90 ml is, by the way, the biggest uh, bottle of this one. So I did the same with opium. But opium, I think I got like online, secondhand. Um, with a lot of perfumes, even like online, when I hunt them down, I try to get smaller ones because it's just more practical that way for me. But anyway, to each his own. So yes, expect this one as well. And remember the Versace follow me around trip. It's, it's incredible. The fashion, the clothes, the people, the love, the dedication that went into preparing the retrospective. It blew me away. Okay, let's smell the Eau de Parfum one last time. It's like an 80s cheap version of a Gardenia vision, which I kind of don't mind. Sometimes I like a cheapy, a cheapish twist to something, but not from Chanel. You know what I mean? It's there. It's present. It, it has a character, but it's not. Uh, it's not the Gardenia from uh, from Jacques Polge. It just isn't the, the same Gardenia anymore, guys. If you can hunt down the Eau de Toilette or the Pure Parfum, but I don't have the Pure Parfum yet. So I will reserve complete judgment. I, I've smelled the Pure Parfum uh, on me and I've also, Chanel has given me ceramic little sticks to kind of tab into the Pure Parfum and I have those as well. And, and the Pure Parfum of Gardenia smells magical. But the last time I smelled it was while or whilst the Eau de Toilettes were also still available. So I don't know if Olivier also messed with the formulation of the Pure Parfum. Uh, in general, in the entire series. This I don't know. So I reserve judgment there, but that's the one missing in my collection and the Pure Parfum would be a purchase that I would I would like to make. But the Eau de Toilette Gardenia has a reminiscence of Eden by Cacharel. Old school Eden, not the reformulated one. And the Eau de Parfum Gardenia is like an 80s, more fun vibe, which is also okay. Now, this video is a bit longer, but it's still not long enough to tell you what the longevity of these two will be. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because we don't know, you know, I don't know. It's I'm going to need a couple of hours to figure this out. So I might post it on Instagram or you might write me because as you often do in the, in the comment sections like, Deco, do you have any update? How long did it last? So... Keep checking in the comment sections up because I'm probably going to write, there's going to be a comment in the comment section sooner or later where I tell somebody or I just post on my own a comment saying, guys, by the way, longevity on me on the day I was filming was so long and so long. Projection. This, this is the projection from the body. Quite, quite, quite short. I guess if, you know, but I just did three sprays here, three here. I would probably do like 20 sprays all over me and then people would probably sense it. But I think it, it could be an aggressive scent if you overdo it e either way. So guys, before the end end, I had a weird dream uh, about this bag. Um, <laughs> I dreamt it was falling apart. 
I literally dreamt that, that this bag, oh my God, I was suffering so much in my dream because I love, this is a bit more of a Spartan version of a Chanel bag. It is aged uh, lambskin. Uh, you can check the review in the description box down below. This is Cruise 2016, um, Korea, Seoul Cruise collection. Uh, I love this kind of aged uh, lambskin, um, not calfskin. And um, it's a single flap, so it's it, it's a bit cheaper in its construction. It's simpler, but it's so squishy. I just love, love, love this bag. And I was suffering so much in the dream because it literally just fell apart. It was like peeling off and there was like all the white cotton underneath that turned yellow. And um, what a weird dream. I thought, is the empire collapsing? That's a thought for you. Sometimes dreams are premonitions. Chanel, winter is coming. All right, for those of you who love Game of Thrones, that's something for you. Uh, for those of you who love Twin Peaks, I say how do. And it's a world of truck drivers. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do thumb it up. Uh, and tell me what your preference is. Les exclusives or de toilettes? Les exclusives or de parfums? Both, maybe. Some of you like both. Uh, and if you do like both, which is the one that you would purchase in both Auto Toilet and Auto Parfum form? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already here on YouTube. I am also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Guys, no matter how much brand marketing tries to brainwash us, play us like a fiddle. We don't let them do that to us because we never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.